with these two airplanes. Can you tell me the difference between these two paper airplanes? One's skinny and one's fat. Okay, good observation. So we're going to test these two airplanes and see what happens when we throw them. I'm going to hold one and Linda's going to hold the other. Ready? One, two, three. What happened to the two airplanes? Yes. One didn't go as far as the other. And so one crashed and burned, basically. <laughs> and what happened to the other one? It glided. It glided. Good job. So engineers are working every day to figure out different designs to make airplanes more efficient, whether it be making airplanes travel long distances or making them travel faster. So, we're going to look at this picture. Now, which airplane do you think will travel the longest distance, A or B? A. A, correct. Now, which one will tra travel the fastest? B. B, correct. Aside from engineers who design airplanes, engineers are also looking for alternative ways to cultivate energy. So, raise your hand if you've heard of solar panels before. Yes. Um, what do we use solar panels for? To convert solar energy into electricity. Okay, and what is solar energy? The sun. Sun, energy from the sun. So these are two familiar solar panels. This one on the right is a calculator and it is used in classrooms and you get the solar energy from your classroom light. So if we turned off the light, our calculator wouldn't work, which would be kind of depressing. And if we turned on the light, our calculator would work without batteries. And this one is very familiar for school zones. It is operated by the energy from the sun as well. So, there's also another energy source, wind energy. Raise your hand if you've heard of wind turbines or saw them before. Okay? And who would like to tell me what a wind turbine looks like? Yes. A fan. A fan. Okay. That's very interesting. These are pictures from wind turbines in West Texas. They are actually 55 meters tall and they have blades on them. And in Austin alone, they power 55,000 homes with electricity. Isn't that neat? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna use all this information that Morgan and I have given you to answer our question of the day, which is, which wind turbine design will help us produce the most electricity and why? And not just using pictures, and diagrams, we're actually going to use our very own models of wind turbines. So, could anyone tell me the difference between these two wind turbines? I'll hold them up for you. One has more blades than the other. So, which one has more blades? How many blades does this one have? Five. How many blades does this one have? Three. Okay. And so, we're going to use these to answer our question of the day. And before we start, I'm going to pass out this vocabulary sheet. And the first word on the vocabulary sheet just so happens to be wind turbine. So, wind turbine. Make sure that you're writing everything that we write on the board in your interactive journals. So, a wind turbine turns wind energy into electricity. So, on the count of three, we're going to say wind turbine, okay? One, two, three. Wind, wind turbine. turbine. Okay. So, in order to turn something into electricity, how do you think that would happen with these wind turbines? How do you think it will happen if, to convert this into electricity? By just using the wind turbines and the blades and the number of blades. How about something regarding the spins? Uh, how, many, how fast does it spin or how many times it spins? Okay. So what we're going to say throughout the day is more spins equals more electricity. So on your vocabulary sheet, it should say spins, and in front of that you're going to write more. And then after that you're going to write electricity equals more electricity. 
So before we start and pass out the materials, as scientists, we're going to need for you guys to make predictions. So make your predictions, and Morgan and I are going to walk around and hand you these winter gardens to each different group. Okay, so in our experiment today, we're going to have two different variables, an independent variable and a dependent variable. Now, the independent variable is what we change, and the dependent variable is what you observe or measure. So can you give me an example of what an independent variable, variable would be in this experiment? Time. Okay, what's another one? Wind. Okay, it's what we change for the experiment to work. Oh, the number of blades. The number of blades, <laughs> correct. Yes. And what would be the dependent variable? So that is what we observe or measure. The number of spins. Hmm? Yes, correct. Okay, so I'm going to pass out job cards. And each of you will have a different job. And each week you'll have a different job. So it will be fair. And after each trial, you'll rotate your job cards so everybody will have a different job. So technicians, will you raise your hand? Okay, your job is to count how many times the blade passes the base. So the easiest way to do this is to follow the black blade and count how many times it passes the base of the wind turbine. Okay, uh, time and safety managers, raise your hand. Okay, so your job is to make sure that your group stays on time and you're gonna start and stop whenever he does. So you'll each have 20 seconds to complete the experiment for each trial. And principal investigators, your job is to use a fan and the wind doesn't always flow in the same direction. But in our experiment, we're going to make sure that the wind is constant. So this is not another variable that we have to work with. So you want the fan to be right in the center of the wind vent. And recorders, your job is to make sure that the fan is the same distance in each trial. So it will be one paper length away from the base. So right about there. Okay, so now we're going to get started on the experiment. So, you already have your wind turbine, and we're going to start with the five blade first. So, we're going to time you for 20 seconds and see what happens for the first trial. So, now that we've gotten all our results and you've put in the number of spins, what are we going to do with all of this class data? How do we represent a number of, how do we represent several numbers as one number? An average. An average, excellent. You guys are future mathematicians. So, how do we take the average? Add the numbers together and divide by the number of numbers there yes. are. So we add the total numbers and divide how, by how many numbers that they are. So, for today, we had a five blade and a three blade. And we're going to collect all of our classes' data and we're going to get a class average. Okay, so what did the data show? The three blade was faster. The three blade was faster. It had a higher average, yeah. It had a higher average? Okay, so try and talk with the group and discuss what that means and why would the three blade be faster. Okay, you just come up with the answer? Um, maybe because it's lighter. Yes. Okay, and what's another observation? Um, How many, about the number of blades? Maybe. Because it has less blades, so it goes faster? Correct. So the three blades going to go faster because it has three blades instead of five. So it has a smaller amount of blades. So what are some things that we could change in this experiment? What it's made out of. Correct. Okay, so our models are made out of wood and paper. Now, which is lighter, paper or metal? Paper. Paper. Which is more expensive, paper or metal? Metal. Metal, correct. So metal is preferred because it is, although it's more expensive, it's more sturdy. So therefore, for it'll be able to withstand the wind that the earth encounters. Now, the real wind turbines in West Texas are actually made out of hollow fiberglass and steel. So therefore, it can 
withstand any type of weather and keep spinning. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look back at how do these wind turbines actually produce energy? And what, how do wind turbines produce electricity? It converts wind energy into electricity. Okay, and so what is wind energy? The wind. Oh, what type of resource would the wind oh, be? Renewable. A renewable. And also, wind energy is a natural resource. And so, a natural resource, what other natural resources could we use to make our wind turbine work? Besides wind. Water. Water. I think we should test this out. And make sure you see how fast or slow it turns. Okay. So how fast does that turn? Slow. Slow. <laughs> so with this wind turbine, it turns slow because of the water, because it's made for wind. But there are actual water turbines that turn fast and convert energy with water into electricity. And these are generally found in dams. So this is a picture of a water, a water turbine. And also on your vocabulary sheet, you have water turbine is one of your vocabulary words. So what we're gonna do is again, whatever we write on the board is what you write on your paper. So we're gonna write water turbine And a water turbine turns water energy into electricity. So on the count of three, can everyone repeat water turbine after me? One, two, three. Water turbine. Okay. Good job. And this is the picture of a dam that actually has a water turbine in it. Cool. Okay, so humans use two different kinds of resources. We have renewable and non-renewable. So first is renewable. Can everybody say renewable? Renewable. Good job. So a renewable resource is a natural resource with the ability to be replaced by nature over time. So can you give me an example of what a renewable resource might be? Wind. Wind. What's another example? Water. Water. Good job. Another resource that we have is called non-renewable. Can everybody say non-renewable? Non-renewable. Good job. Okay, so non-renewable resource is a natural resource that is not created as fast as it is used up. Now, what would be an example of a non-renewable resource? Coal. Coal. Good job. So what are some advantages of, non of renewable resources? What are some, what are some advantages? Of renewable? renewable. Mm -hmm. Um, we never run out. Good job. Okay, what are some disadvantages of having these renewable resources? They're not always accessible or everywhere. Good. So, sometimes water may not always flow and the wind may not always blow. So, now that we've done all of this, we're going to look back at our question of the day to make sure that we have an answer for it. Just to go over it again. Which wood turbine design will help us produce the most electricity and why? And what, what did we say it was? The three blade. The three blade, excellent. So now that you guys are experts on wind turbines, you guys are gonna show us what you know.